Good morning, my name is Erica Reed. I'm with the Colorado Music Festival. And today I am talking with poet and speaker and conductor, Kalina Bovell. Uh, Kalina, I know you are hard at work with a number of projects. Can you tell us where you are right now, what you're working on at the moment? Yeah, well, firstly, hi, nice to oh, meet you. Hello. Um, hello, so I'm actually in Toronto right now, or Toronto, still have no idea how you say it. Um, and I have been here since May 15, conducting uh, the production of Scott Joplin's Trimanisha. And what's really cool is that this Canadian production is the 10th performance in history of the work. Oh, so it's wow. it's a really special moment. Uh, and then something that was kind of unbeknownst to me is that I randomly made history uh, and that I'm the first Black woman to conduct opera in Canada. And I was kind of like, oh. I mean, I just, I said yes, because I thought it was a really cool project and it was one that I believed in, yeah. but then to also have that attributed, attributed to it, I was like, oh, okay, well, that's, that's pretty awesome. So yes, I'm in Toronto right now. Kind of a bummer to have to set that record, but, <laughs> but congratulations. I can see how it's both celebratory and not. <laughs> yeah, right. Because I mean, you, when you're like, that's such a tremendous honor. And then you also ask yourself, but we're still having first in 2023. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You're also in our music director, Peter Engine stomping ground. So that's kind of a fun. <laughs> yeah. Yes, exactly. Yeah, it's that's right. Because he, he had Toronto Symphony. Yes. Yes. yes for yes. 14 years, I think. Mm -hmm. like that. Yeah. So anyway, uh, you are conducting for us uh, in early July, on July 2nd, you're conducting our family concert, which includes music such as Prokofiev's uh, Peter and the Wolf. How will you approach that concert, which is for families and young children? Will you approach it differently as with the operas and things that you're dealing with? Or how, how will you come at the family concert? I mean, honestly, I approach concerts the same, you know, in that you're trying to establish connection with an audience and, you know, the but my approach to conducting and my approach to anyone that I work with is just empowerment and uplifting. And so I would hope that any audience that comes to this concert just wants to have a good time. Because also, if you're not having fun with what you're doing, then why are you doing what you're doing? Yeah, that is a great answer. I love that. We spoke to your narrator, Janae Burris. I don't know if you okay. had a chance to meet her or not. She's not wonderful. Yet. We talked a little bit about her approach to Peter and the Wolf, which she has wanted to narrate since she was a young girl and first heard it like in school. Oh, how cool. Um, do you look forward to conducting Peter and the Wolf? Do you have an attachment to that or uh, any comment on that piece? Well, you know, it's actually funny. This is my first time conducting Peter and the Wolf. Okay. And I'll be honest, before this opportunity, I had never heard the piece in its entirety. All right. So, you know, for me and, and who I am and my learning style, I just listened to a bunch of different recordings, one to see what narrators do and also just to get a feel for the piece. Um, so I'm definitely excited because Peter and the Wolf is... I guess I'm going to say the OG kind of family <laughs> story, right? When you think about yes. it, I mean, it's whenever you think family concerts, pe people uh, immediately gravitate towards Peter and the Wolf because it's still relatively accessible. Um, it's still such a fun piece. And then, you know, just the, the overarching story of it. I mean, it's, it's a young boy who goes out into the meadow and has these adventures. And, you know, I think the beauty of that, especially in today's society, is that we're all so attached to our uh, technology. Mm -hmm. Right. But then to see the story where it's just a kid being a kid and to bring that to families. I think there's something rather beautiful about that. I think you're going to have a lot of fun with Janae. She has just uh, her first child is around one year old and she's really getting into that sort of she's already a performer and a spoken word artist and mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's going to be a really fun, unique Peter and the Wolf. I think every Peter and the Wolf becomes really unique because of that narration piece and you know the approach to it so I think it'll yeah. be really fun so the other pieces on our family program are uh good night moon which is sent mm -hmm. to music by Eric Whitaker we have a suite from Bizet's Carmen and mm -hmm. we have an overture from Samuel Coleridge Taylor's African suite do you have any thoughts on those other pieces or why they might be good introductions to children to the world of music well good night moon is based on a book of the same name uh, and it's, again, another really cute story of it's a young bunny who basically is his bedroom is covered is what painted green. And he says goodnight to every single item in his bedroom before going to sleep. And I think that's absolutely adorable. Uh, and, you know, when you think about that message, it's just gratitude and appreciation for what you have and for the things that are around you. And I think, again, why it's so important to introduce that story um, to audiences is because we need to teach, not we don't need to teach, but it's important that 
kids learn about gratitude and grace. And then also Eric Whitaker is considered a rock star in the choral yes. music world. Yeah. So to also be able to program a piece by Eric Whitaker um, is absolutely fantastic because I love his music. Uh, same with the Courage Taylor. I mean, I have been a huge Courage Taylor fan since I first discovered his ballad. Ooh, maybe almost a decade ago, you know? And so with the Danse Negra, uh, it's, it's an overture that's very fast. It's very fun. I mean, it's about six minutes long and he takes you through so many different moods. You know, it starts off very fast from functious in your face. And then there's this really lovely, slow, melodic, lyrical section. And then again, Coach Taylor being Coach Taylor, he comes back to that fast, rambunctious section. But he also, whenever he writes, he uses, um, he always finds a way to interject his culture or to include his culture uh, within his pieces. So that might be done with some of the instrumentation that he uses, or even the way he writes his melodies using some of the offbeat rhythms, meaning rhythms that don't necessarily line up with where a beat should. So I love that he kind of puts who he is into his music. And the importance of that for me is just self-acceptance. And, you know, meaning that everything is for everyone. And that's what I love about Coleridge Taylor's music, because he was a Black British composer living in London. And I know, I, I believe that when he was coming up as a young musician, he wasn't accepted as first. He was still trying to find his own voice. But to see him find his voice through music, I think there's something fantastic about that. And I would love to share that with audiences in that it's okay to not know who you are, but eventually you will discover who you are. Oh, I love hearing this. It sounds like a program, such a such a diverse program in terms of mood and energy like you're mm -hmm. talking about gratitude and grace and you're talking about self-acceptance and I'm also hearing rhythm and dance and mm -hmm. fun and it just seems like it sort of crosses the board this it's going to be a very a varied program which is great I think for those young attention spans we're always trying to capture oh definitely because then you look at the, the Bizet suite you know from Carmen I mean every person knows Carmen because every person has watched a commercial <laughs> that has, you know, the, the Tor Toreador scene, uh, music scene in it. Um, and so with, with Carmen, it comes from an opera, but it takes you through so many different moods, you know, whether it's fast, lively, slow, melodic, lyrical. The Carmen suite definitely has something for every everyone. And I know, you know, audiences are going to love it. Sounds like there will also be a mix of the familiar with the maybe new to you. You're likely to hear something you've recognized before, as well as something that's going to be a new favorite, maybe. Most definitely. And I think that's also part of our job as a musician. And, you know, something that I take very seriously as a conductor, which is introducing music to people they didn't know they needed to hear. And the fact that Colorado Music Festival also, you know, we curated this program together to be able to do just that. So, you know, to start out with the Carmen and then kind of take people through this road of the Coach Taylor, followed by Eric Whitaker, what I'm sure most people will not have heard before, and then closing it with something that's familiar with the Peter and the Wolf. I mean, it's a lovely little journey, I think. Yeah, I just keep thinking about, so again, Janae Burris was talking about how she fell in love with Peter and the Wolf as a child and has been like mm -hmm. waiting all this time to like get a chance to read it or whatever, like you will be a lot of children's first memories of some of these mm. pieces of music that maybe decades later they are playing in their band or uh, they are exploring in different ways. I think that's uh, that's one of my favorite things about the family concert is beginning families or children's traditions with music and giving them their first exp exposure to pieces that they may love for the rest of their lives. Most definitely, yeah. And I think, you know, overall, that's the beauty of music. I was going to say classical music, but at the end of the day, that's the beauty of music. Yeah. Yeah. Well, before I let you go, I want to ask you about poetry. Uh, okay. Because I was really excited to talk to you because I'm a poet. Anybody who's watched any of these videos has had to suffer through listening to, about poetry. For everything. <laughs> so I just wanted to ask quickly, like, how do your poetry practices and your music practices, are they separate for you? Do they work together? Can you comment on that at all? I think they definitely work together. You know, the classical music sometimes was very hard for me before um, because as just a poet words are very important you know and I don't always listen to classical music I mean I'm a huge death metal head uh, so All I right. tend to listen to like metal and alternative and when people kind of have that similar reaction it's like well how and I said because it's it's all about the words yes. for me. you know yeah. it's about the emotion and and kind of the what's going on behind the text 
And so for me, for poetry, it helps me with conducting because I'm able to craft stories and I'm able to put words and text through different sections in the score. So with Peter and Wolf, it's, it's simple because he put the text for you. But for the Dance Negra by Coach Taylor, I'm actually crafting a story so yeah. that when I get to certain sections, oh, I know this is what's going on in my head. So if anything, I feel like being a poet and a creative just enhances what I do as a conductor because it allows me to tap into another medium of my, cre my creative side. That must also come into play when you're when you're conducting opera and things like that to be able to to honor the text as much as the music itself. I think that must it must really come into play at that as well. Most definitely. And what was interesting is is the uh, excuse me the Scott Joplin was and is my very first opera. Okay. And so to not have experience with it before, I mean I had many conversations with uh, friends who conduct opera and I just said how do you approach this yeah. you know and they all said it starts with the text and yeah. it starts and I and I read the libretto like it was a book you know and I just read it backwards and forward trying to understand the meaning and you're absolutely right it's like at the end of the day the music is there to enhance the drama of the text yeah and I think the same is true I mean Peter and the Wolf is in sort of an opera <laughs> in, in a way it's sort of a mm -hmm. small opera of its own kind of um okay well anyway thank you this has just been really fascinating to get to know you I think our family concert sounds like one of our best just sounds like a thrill ride uh it is on Sunday July 2nd at 10 30 it's about a 45 minute concert for those young atten attention spans we were talking about is there anything else you'd like to say before we sign off you know, I, I'm, what I'd like to say is I want people to come have fun, enjoy, and hopefully they leave excited to just listen to more. Yeah. All right. Perfect. Thank you so much. Thanks for spending time with us this morning. No, thank you.